Hello and welcome to Super Soul Skills. You can find me here on YouTube and also on Telegram for more in-depth, longer energy forecasts and spiritual musings, teachings, meditations, etc, etc. How are you today? I was teaching a workshop about the Law of Attraction and I thought that while these ideas that I'm teaching are the thoughts of the day, I thought it would be quite synchronistic to come on here and share them with you. So on the flip chart, I was writing out where your focus goes, energy flows. We know that, oh, sorry, lipstick. We know that we live in a world that encourages us to want. Advertisements, social media, Facebook, comparing people to other people. There is this constant drive to make us want, to make us feel like we're not enough. And I'm fascinated with the subconscious or the super conscious as I like to call it that's where true healing and shifts take. It's not in your conscious mind. The conscious mind can only tell you what has happened. It can't, it can't go higher than that. But the super conscious is source. It's connected to God. It's got that powerful alignment. So when we tap into the super conscious, that's where we can access the genuine, true messages of our soul. It's also where we can find our dysfunctional thinking. It's where we can see our programs from childhood. So I want to share this little teaching with you. When it comes to I want, fill in the space. Understand that using the law of attraction, and by the way, whether you use the law of attraction or not, the law of attraction is default. So you can use gravity, you know, you can get to the edge of the cliff and understand that there's a law of gravity and if you jump off the cliff, you're gonna to fall to your death. Law of attraction is like that. It, it's happening whether you respect it or not. So people say, oh, I'm going to use the law of attraction. Well, the law of attraction is happening by default all the time. It's just the nature of the reality we live in. So when someone says to you, I want a car or I want a home, I want a baby, I want a partner, whatever they're wanting, by the degree of how much they believe, expect and know that what they want is created in spirit it already exists in the non-physical. If they trust, believe and know that that's already done in spirit and they have no fear, no insecurity and no negative limiting programming that's blocking them from receiving that, they will manifest that very quickly. And we see this all the time with people who are extremely relaxed, calm, people who don't sweat, people who have what it looks like the gifts of manna from God fall into their laps, okay? The reason they seem to manifest so easily is simply down to their expectation that whatever they want, God gives them or the universe provides. So if you're somebody who's in a lack consciousness, when you say, I want the car, I want whatever, fill in the gap. When you say, I want, that want vibration, and it's not about the words, it's about the energy behind the words. It's about the energy that you're vibrating. I want a car. If you're in a lack consciousness, the universe only hears I don't have a car. I don't have a home. I don't have whatever you're wanting. Because that wanting from a desperate lack 
consciousness place is oozing out to the universe, I do not have these things I want. So the universe by law of attraction says, okay, like attracts like, here you go. Here's more of what you don't have that you're missing by your constant wanting, your constant obsessing, and you're constant trying to chase the thing you want, you're actually giving more airtime in your consciousness to what you do not have, and you're telling the universe, I don't have this. I don't have these things I want, because I want them, which suggests I don't have them, because you don't want after something that you already have. Now, I call this class the spiritual paradox because when we are working with the universal laws, we will see that there is always what a para what seems to be a paradox or what is a paradox. So two seemingly opposing things that actually are not opposing or contradicting each other, even though they seem like they are. So one of my students used the example of he was interested in dating this girl and because he wanted her and he was obsessing and he was like I want her I want her I want to go on a date with her I want to be her boyfriend he was saying to me but I'm doing all the things right I'm I have my clear vision I know what I want I'm doing affirmations I'm doing meditation and I said yeah but when I tune into your energy straight away I can feel your wanting is from a place of lack you're very aware that you're not her boyfriend that she's not in your life you don't get to hold her hand and kiss her and do all those things. And you're very focused. Your airtime is given more to the lack of her presence in your life rather than giving your, your consciousness a break and focusing upon what is working in your life. So I have seen this time and time again in my own life, in my friends, in my clients. If you are someone who's wanting something from a place of not having it, you need to soften your approach. You need to soften your consciousness around that desire. So you can replace I want with, play the wouldn't it be nice game. Wouldn't it be nice if I was her girlfriend? Wouldn't it be nice if we could hold hands and cuddle and do all the wonderful things that being her partner would be? Wouldn't it be nice to have a new car? Wouldn't it be nice to run my hand along the smooth exterior and admire the colour and sit inside and put my hands on the new steering wheel and smell that gorgeous fresh new car smell. When you play the wouldn't it be nice game, you're not saying to the universe, lack, lack, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have this. And you're not obsessing and giving more airtime to the fact that that thing is missing in your experience. When you say, wouldn't it be nice, you're tapping into the universal flow that knows and contains all creation. And when you do that, you're bringing that into your consciousness and you're cooking that in and you're giving off a whole different vibration. I've used the wouldn't it be nice game in my life with lots of things and I've had great success with it. I've also given it to clients. I, I also have the example of a client who was really desperate to get pregnant. She wanted a baby. She wanted a baby so much it just took over her consciousness. Her whole life was hinging on whether or not she was able to get pregnant. And I told her something that felt counterintuitive, which is often what healers do, because we know how these things work. And I said to her, I'm going to use a spiritual paradox. You need to stop trying to get pregnant. Stop wanting a baby. Now, that's very hard to do when you have a genuine desire. But I said, this is where distraction is a positive thing. Healthy, happy distraction. I said, go back to your husband. Have fun. Stop trying to create an outcome. Release all expectations. Call up your girlfriends. Book a tropical holiday away. Something where you can kick up your heels, let down your hair and just be you and just enjoy your life. Just be present. Be here in this moment. Have fun. Live life. Be grateful. Appreciate what you have. You have an amazing husband who loves you, who adores you. 
take all that pressure off and use the spiritual paradox of actually not wanting, focusing and obsessing on what you don't have. Turn the other cheek, right? Jesus said, turn the other cheek. He was talking about the law of attraction. If somebody slaps you in the face, he said, turn the other cheek. He was talking about turn towards something more positive. She did this. She went off. She booked the holiday. She started having date nights again with her husband, having fun, relaxing. She got back to painting again. She got back to doing the things that she used to do before she was so anxiously ridden, obsessive about becoming pregnant. Within a couple of weeks, she comes back to me. She said, I did, I took all your advice. I did what you said. And the reason I haven't been here for a few weeks is I actually was just enjoying my life again. I was actually happy. I was comfortable. I was connected. Guess what? She said, I'm pregnant. I wasn't one bit surprised. I see this all the time. If you're obsessing about something and it's taking over your mind and it's a negative obsession, there's a lack of belief that you can have that thing. Of course, you're not going to manifest it because again, by wanting, you're basically saying, I do not have this thing I want. So we see this and the example of the pregnancy is brilliant because you see it where women, couples are trying to have a baby and they try and try and try for years and years and years. And eventually they get worn down by life and they just give up and they say, okay, that's it. We have to make peace with where we are. We have to enjoy what we have. And they do, they genuinely do. And sometimes they go and adopt um, or they foster. And as soon as they have the energy of having that baby through adoption or fostering or by surrender, by peace, by choosing the path of peace. And in my previous video, I talked about changing to a different timeline and how you have to make peace with where you are to get where you want to go. So if you haven't watched that video, it's the one before this, check it out. But that's often after the adoption, after getting rid of the mindset of no baby, when they have the baby, that's when they get pregnant. That's when it happens. That's when their own baby arrives into the world. It, I, you see this all the time. And those of you in Ireland who know Rosanna Davidson, she, this is what happened to her. She had several, like I'm talking like 13, something like 13 miscarriages or something. Crazy amount of miscarriages. Um, and tried IVF and did everything and nothing worked. Oh. Oh, okay, that decided to come off. And then she had a surrogacy. She went to America to get a surrogacy because I don't think that's legal here. Had twins, as if I recall, or did she? No, she, sorry, she had a one child through the surrogacy. And I think that child was just born when she, she fell pregnant with twins. So now she's got like three. So all her wanting finally manifested as it often does. We all, we all know this. There's things in your life that you really, really want and you might want it for years. And then you just surrender, you give up, you let it go. You get out of that lack consciousness and you turn to the cheek. And what happens? That's when, boom, you get what you want. I bet this has happened to you. If it has, let me know in the comments below because I actually love when that happens. And oftentimes when it does come in, we're like, yeah, I kind of didn't want it anymore. Or not that you didn't want it, but you were over the desperate expectation or wanting the needing to have it. And, you know, that's what the, the student was saying in the workshop today when he was obsessing about wanting this girl, all he did was push her further and further and further away because she could smell his neediness. Where when he gave it up and let it go and moved on with his life and actually focused on what was working, that's when the girls start to come around and come back and say, well, maybe we'll give it a go. So I just wanted to draw your attention to the law of attraction and how this spiritual paradox works. It's a funny old world we live in. There's that old saying, much gets more, because like attracts like. So if you have a sense of having a lot and having much, you attract more of that. If you're in a lack consciousness, you're going to attract more lack. So look at what you're saying you're wanting, look at your desires and see, is it more on the 
black side or is it more on the absolutely this is going to happen this is happening this is already done in spirit I am already in that reality in my consciousness it's literally just waiting to blossom in my physical reality I hope this was helpful if you enjoyed this interlude please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more and as I said doing a lot more these days on telegram telegram is brilliant it's not associated with Facebook and all that garbage so um, I like that it's just simple and succinct not a big fan of social media um, pretty much YouTube and telegram is pretty much all I use um, and I even try to keep that to a minimum as well so I don't do even a lot of messages and stuff I'm just literally using it as a platform to share this metaphysical wisdom and knowledge with you so please um, to show me your your appreciation of me and what I'm giving you please subscribe to telegram as well sending you so much love I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are and that you are in a consciousness of prosperity and abundance <laughs>